Hello everybody, welcome back to Terrace Talk. No City face Middlesbrough tomorrow at 12 o'clock, which I'm mentioning just because I mentioned it to Ben just as we began recording. He actually admitted that he didn't know that was the case. So, uh, get that off the bat nice and early for everyone who's uh, who's listening or watching. Midday kickoff tomorrow uh, live on, on the television or of course on pinkin.com if you fancy the live blog. Um, another Terrace Talk for you. Today, I'd like to be joined by Ben Ambrose, Norwich fan, part of the Norwich Talk YouTube channel, and uh, Chris Cassidy from Borough. Oh, I always struggle with the name, Chris, so I'll, I'll let you go. For it. There we go, Baropolis. There we go. No, it's, it's been a busy morning. That's what I'm going to go. <laughs> that's what I'm going to go with. Um, yeah, Chris, let's let's start with you. How are how are things with you first and foremost, Middlesbrough? Um, having a, a certainly compared to last season, a, a better season. How's the mood in the northeast at the minute? Uh, yeah, obviously, uh, I spoke to you earlier on in the season and everything was rosy and we'd only been beaten once. Obviously, at this point, uh, we've we've lost three out of the last four. We've sort of hit a bit of a patch that I think everyone was expecting, picked up a few injuries. Obviously, we've got a very thin squad and I think that's just starting to take its toll, really. Um, yeah, we've obviously got a thin squad, as I mentioned, and just in key areas, probably without the the quality of the starting players' results have started to become a little bit inconsistent. Mm. I know Yannick Bellassi has obviously signed, and we'll come on to him in a little while. Uh, Darnell Fisher, as we record this, isn't officially a Middlesbrough player, but um, it seems from what Neil Warnock's been saying that that is edging closer. Um, just on Warnock, I know we spoke about him at length on, on the last show and kind of your thoughts on him. Would you would you still say that there's an element of him overperforming with a squad available at the moment? Because I saw, and, and look, I, I, don't, I can't say I tune into the Middlesbrough fan base fairly often, but I saw a couple of tweets in midweek maybe expressing a bit of doubt for the way Middlesbrough's performances were going at the moment. I think it would be fair to say that he's still overachieving. Obviously, as you as you mentioned, last season we were fighting relegation and this season, you know, we're challenging for the playoffs. It's it's a nice change and we have a very thin squad, even with Balassi and if, if Fisher gets over the line, it, it's still a, a relatively thin squad with injuries that we've also got at the moment. So I think it's 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 definitely a case of overachieving from Warnock and we might be a little bit inconsistent at the moment, but you know it's it's still nice to be in and around there and and still having something to sort of work towards for the for the back end of the season. Yeah, absolutely. And Warnock is, uh, if he's experienced anything, it's getting teams out of this division and uh, he knows how to get a tune out of teams in the championship. So we fully expect Middlesbrough to continue to be in that playoff debate for the rest of the season. Um, ben, how, how are you feeling as a Norwich City fan? Everything's pretty positive at the moment, really. There isn't too much to grumble about. There really isn't. And you know what? I was in bed this morning and I was watching Norwich's training video and I was just like, everyone's having a good time. And I just thought back to the end of last season and how sort of horrid that was and, you know, that sort of sinking feeling and that feeling of how is Daniel Farker going to turn this around? He's done it. And we're top of the league. There were some good results for us um, midweek as well when we weren't playing. So I am feeling very, very optimistic. It's nice to see you're wearing your Powak shirt as well because of uh, Demetrius Yanoulis has <laughs> signed, which is which is good of you. Um, let's speak about him very quickly. He's obviously got his, his work permit sorted. He's um, available for selection. We're recording this prior to Daniel Farkas' press conference, but providing he hasn't picked up an injury or, or anything else, would, would you expect him to start tomorrow? I know there's been a bit of debate about whether you drop Jakob Sorensen out after maybe his good performance um, in, in the last championship game, although obviously the FA Cup game last week where I think everyone kind of struggled a little bit would you bring your new list straight in I think I probably would but that's mostly based off the fact that Kenny McLean has got COVID and he shouldn't be available as far as I'm aware um so theoretically you just put Sorensen into centre mid which I've wanted to see for a long time because we know what a good player he's proving to be in his uh, position he's not played in before um I remember before Brentford it was what two minutes before the game never played there before since then been as solid as a rock um really good on the offense as well but yeah I, I'll probably bring Gino listen left back and um sort of try and bed him in as quickly as, he, uh, as you can but he he's, he's really exciting and I'm very excited to see him play but yeah I, I probably would throw him in the deep end yeah even given, or is this a good opportunity, should I say, rather, given the games coming up on the horizon, Millwall away, which isn't easy for any player to to adapt straight into in the Premier League at the Den, I know the, or the Championship rather, in, at the Den, and I know that obviously there are no fans at the moment, so that makes it a little bit easier. But then obviously the big one next Friday against Swansea, which is looking like somewhat of a promotion shootout at the moment. Yeah, do you know what? There's no easy, easy run of the Championship, is there? 
And the only way a team or a player, sorry, is going to get to know a team incredibly well um, is by playing with them. And the championship is relentless, especially this season, given sort of the fixture congestion. There's never going to be time for him to train and adapt in training and then play. You might as well just throw him in there in the deep end, because realistically, someone who's not been playing left back has been doing a decent job. So I think a natural left back coming in, especially with his reputation as being really attacking, can't not succeed theoretically touch wood um but yeah the um yeah I, i'm very much focused on this game rather than swansea because i think my views will sort of differ between the uh, the two games yeah mm, i've just been handed a very nice cup of tea which is uh, which is good which is why i may have seen lucky, for, lucky for you yeah <laughs> chris chris um i um, you kind of referenced middlesbrough's poor form at the moment is that kind of um captured in in the result in midweek uh, against Rotherham who albeit have had some very good results against Derby recently um, begin maybe to be in a little bit of form themselves a 3-0 defeat to them is that kind of capture where Middlesbrough are at the moment is is confidence a little bit low in the camp yeah I think that's fair to say obviously we've we've picked up a few key injuries as I mentioned um, Dyke Steele Tavernier two of the the main ones and obviously that horror challenge I'm sure you may have seen on Dale Fry against Blackburn um, still a little bit frustrated by that, but we won't delve into that. Um, yeah, just as I say, it's, it's a thin squad and I think it's really being sort of pushed to the very edge at the moment. Um, we're hoping, obviously, with, with Belassi and Fisher that that'll add some much-needed depth. But the the Rotherham result is is just a reflection of the, the recent inconsistency, really. We obviously went away to Forest after being beat by Birmingham and then come back from that Forest win and have two defeats on the bounce. It's just sort of stoppy starty at the moment and we, we just need to get back sort of into the the, the run that we were on earlier on and put a few wins together and, and really push on. I think Neil Warnock's joking in his press conferences at the minute that he just wants January out of the way and he says the season's starting in February, so I'll stick on that. Yeah, and if, if Neil Warnock is anything, he's, he's usually able to utilise the transfer markets pretty well. I mean, Yannick Balassi on, on a loan with his pedigree is, is a very good deal. Um, let's let's speak about him then a little bit. Are you expecting him to start tomorrow? He's obviously not played football much for or much football for Everton fairly recently, but everyone's aware of his talent in the Premier League with, with Crystal Palace, I think, and obviously with uh, with Aston Villa in the Championship as well a few seasons ago. As, as a Borough fan, would you like to see him thrown straight in tomorrow? I mean, personally, I, I, I don't think we've got much to lose. Whether that is the case with Warner, then I'm, I'm not so sure. Obviously, as you mentioned, he hasn't played a lot of football over the past few years. And I don't think he's played in the Championship for probably two, possibly even two and a half years now. So I think he, he'll probably start on the bench tomorrow. But he'll definitely get some minutes at, at some stage. And I think he's, he's really just sort of what we've been crying out for. A little bit of creativity, a little bit of... You know, I don't think uh, he really knows what he's going to do. So defenders might not type of thing. Uh, Neil Warnock referenced that in, from his time at Palace. So I think just that that unpredictability and that uh, attacking threat that probably we, we don't really have a natural what I would call winger in the squad at the moment. So it'll be nice to have a bit of um, a bit of flair and, and just something different to the the attacking line. I've seen Neil Warnock describe this as the week from hell. Does it feel like that as a Middlesbrough fan? It, it, it does at the moment. It's it's obviously picked up a, li- a little bit the last two days. Uh, I think Warnock mentioned earlier on in the week that we missed out on his two key transfer targets. And obviously after the 3-0 defeat to Rotherham, it, it was it was a really sort of low low mood in the fan base. But obviously we've, we've brought in Balassi and it looks like Fisher might get across the line today. So... That's perked everyone up a little bit and, and now obviously we face Norwich tomorrow and hopefully can get a positive result out of that. Mm, I, I know I find Darnell Fisher a really um, difficult player to watch just in terms of how he operates. Very um, very sly in terms of the way he plays the game, which I, I would imagine is probably even more frustrating as a player if I certainly feel it watching it. Um, ben, Norwich City, let's, I'll show you this image which of, of, of last week was Jordan Hugill lying on the Oakwell turf having suffered a, a, what looked like a hamstring injury. Um, how, are you, how are you feeling about Norwich City's striking situation? Obviously, they let Tyrese Omotoy go out on loan. Is that somewhere you'd like to see them 
add a, a, a reinforcement before deadline day, even though we're probably <laughs> expecting that that won't be the case. Yeah, I'm I'm not fussed to be honest with you, Connor. Um, I've seen a lot of the, the Jordan Rhodes talk. Not for me personally. I, I I get the theory behind it, in that you know he loves the club, was fairly decent in eighteen nineteen, but no, not not for me. Um, I think you might as well just give one of the young boys a crack. And with Jordan Hugel up front. That proved to me you don't need an out-and-out goal scorer this season to succeed, um, which is thankfully the case for Norwich because he is injured. It's really unlucky for him, isn't it? Um, but what? I, yeah, I just feel bad for him because he, he scored a couple of goals, a couple of good performances, picks up an injury, as has been the trend this season for a Norwich player. Look at McLean as well again. Um, I know it's a COVID test and not a, an actual injury, but he picked up a bit of form, was really unlucky. But yeah, I, I don't think that I want Norwich to sign anyone. I, I really don't think they will. Um, there's a reason that I think Sebastian Soto has been called back. Um, no idea how available he is, but nonetheless, Daniel Farker will have a plan. Um, and thankfully, Marco Stiefman's injured at the moment. I don't think I'd ever say that. So he can't go back up front, um, which was just not very uh, pleasant to watch at all, was it? But yeah, I, I'm not feeling too down about it, but I do feel um, fairly bad for, for Jordan Hugel, yeah. I would agree. There were signs, I think, in the last few games that actually there was a bit more of an understanding in terms of how Daniel Farker wanted to play and getting him into it, which is a shame that the, the injury has stopped that. But fingers crossed it's not too serious. As I say, we should find out um, within the next hour or so. On Norwich City striking situation, obviously Jordan Hughes' injury came at a time when Timo Pukki's been out with this sort of side strain, which sounds a fairly sort of unique injury. He's not a player that gets injured a lot by all accounts. Adam Ida as well. Um, is or has been out, but is expected to have returned to training this week. Certainly looks like he has from the pictures and, and videos that you referenced at the, at the start of the show. Is there concern about that striker position and maybe Norwich City going into this game without a striker that maybe has been fit for longer than a week or, or even a few days? I think it's a bit different this time, isn't it? In that you've got Emi Buendia, who has found his feet again in the Championship. You've got Todd Campwell um, on the left, who's stepping up again. Um, so I think there's less pressure on the striker than what there was last time where we had to play Marco Stiegman up front. I think it will be very much a case of everyone around the striker, whoever it is, will just need to step up. And theoretically, that makes sense. But also from what we've seen from the rest of the team this season, um, or lately, I should say, is that hopefully they, they can do that. Like I trust Todd Campwell and Emmy Buendia to lead the line together. Um, and whoever plays behind them, I'm sure will, will do a good job. I hope that's Mario Vrancic. And I do trust him to score because he does love to pop up with the odd goal. Um, but, you know, scoring goals isn't really Norwich's game this season, is it? So I don't think it really matters. If we get one or two, I trust Norwich implicitly to defend that lead as we have done so many times this season. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really not worried about it at all. Mm, interesting. We uh, we await the the verdict on Norwich City's uh, fit or not strikers um, in about an hour's time in Daniel Farkas' press conference as we record this. Of course, Pinkin.com will be the place to find those updates. Um, Chris, I've I've just uh, I've, before we start recording, I had a little look at Neil Warnock's comments uh, in in the press. Uh, I, I don't know if it was today or yesterday, but uh, he, he said that in the reverse fixture, he felt Middlesbrough should have beat Norwich at the Riverside Stadium. If you cast your mind back, would you say that's a a fair assessment from that game? I think, from my perspective, yes. Obviously, all the way up until that um, crazy sort of penalty few minutes where obviously Tavernier slipped. And then it can't have been many minutes later where obviously you went up the other end and, and Coulson fouled uh, one of your players and then Pookie sticks your penalty away. I think that was the difference really on the day. Um, up until our penalty, I, I think we were probably going the right way about getting that goal and, and solidifying at that stage of the season. It was our wins were coming from getting that goal and then just solidly defending for the rest of the game, really. So perhaps if we had taken the lead at that point, it, w it would have been a different story. But obviously in the end, it was it was Pukki's penalty that, that won Norwich the game. Mm, I was I was looking at fixtures between the two sides or results before the two sides before we came on and obviously it's weighed in Norwich City's favour at the moment in terms of recent results since that playoff final really which I think uh, apologies to you but we have to get into it for any video <laughs> concerning Middlesbrough but there was a, a time at the Riverside wasn't there a few, it might have been that season if not the season before where Borough beat Norwich 4-0 but it seems quite low scoring affairs between these two sides for some reason Yeah like you say it was a, it was a low scoring affair a fair last last time out and, and even in the, the season that Norwich got promoted, obviously at the Riverside, it was one nil and at Carroll Road, I believe it was one nil as well. So so close games. Um I expect it to be well contested at the weekend, probably 
Um, I won't give my prediction yet because I know you'll ask me at the end. Um, Good man. <laughs> but yeah, hopefully it's it's a close game and we give a good account of ourselves. But I, I don't think it'll be uh, anything like going back to 2014-15. And there certainly won't be four middles where goals going in. <laughs> yeah, I, th- I think uh, a striker called Patrick Bamford uh, scored quite a few of those goals. I wonder what's happening to, to him these days. Um, ben, in, in terms of, of Middlesbrough, the, the 1-0 win at the Riverside in November, does that kind of show Norwich City's pro- promotion credentials? And if they can complete the double over a side like Middlesbrough with Neil Warnock and all of the history he has in this, in this, um, in, in, uh, this level, essentially, does that just go to show maybe that they're, they're just a bit too good for this level at the moment? Yeah, it's quality, isn't it, with Norwich? Um, that's the thing. Where we really didn't deserve a few games, a few wins earlier in the season, we had that quality to get us over the line. And I think Middlesbrough earlier this season was an example of that. I think Chris was right. Middlesbrough were definitely on top. There's absolutely no debating that. Um, I can't remember the, the penalty specifically. Was it the one where Poeta went down because he got fouled by the keeper? I think that it testing was your memory? fouled by Coulson, yeah. Yeah, I, th- I think it was slightly fortunate, wasn't it? Um, and Pukki took the penalty away nicely. Um, but I-, I compare this game in my head to the Barnsley fixture before, in that Middlesbrough team evidently, I think they sit seventh or something now, don't they? Where they aren't quite good enough to get into the playoffs, but equally they're not mid-table fodder. And for Norwich to get six points against teams like this really suggests promotion to me, because these are sort of often the, the-, the highest hurdles, aren't they? Um, and the most difficult. And the thing that gets to me is we know that Neil Warnock is going to give it everything he's got because the man carries a grudge, doesn't he? So I can imagine he's going to want to get over, uh, get one over on Norwich. So I can uh, imagine a very compact performance. And if Norwich can break it down and beat it 2 or 3-0, brilliant. But I would absolutely take a 1-0 scrappy win at this point, yeah. Watching Neil Warnock behind closed doors is a is a prospect I, I'm absolutely <laughs> relishing. I'll be honest, oh, even more it. than even, even more than the game. It's going to be uh, it's going to be interesting. Ben, um, I, I want to speak a little bit about um, Ben Gibson. Uh, ben speaking about Ben, he's been really Brilliant. good this season. Obviously, formerly of of Middlesbrough. Um, just talk to us a little bit about his influence in in this Norwich side because I think he's someone whose performances have quietly been growing, maybe to the level that they were prior to his spell at Burnley. Do you know what? I, I spoke about this on my, my podcast recently where we talked about how we thought signings were going to get on. And I wasn't that hopeful for Ben Gibson. I didn't know how much patience I had in terms of watching him find his feet again. But the guy hit the ground running. He has been absolutely sublime. And I saw sort of 50-50 comments between Borough fans. Some Borough fans were saying he's a leader. He's really, really good. Others were saying he's a bit washed up and he was playing because he's the owner's uh, nephew or something like that. Um, but he's been really, really good for Norwich. Really, really good. And like, as, as like I said, um, I watched that training video earlier. He is quite clearly a leading character. Um, and that is absolutely what Norwich needed following the, the, the relegation from the Premier League. And he, yeah, he's been really, really good. And what surprises me most about Ben Gibson is how comfortable he is on the ball. When we sold Ben Godfrey, I was a bit nervous that we'd sort of lose that um, ability to play out from the back successfully and consistently. Ben, uh, ben Godfrey could just sort of switch a play from anywhere to the fullbacks, couldn't he? And we haven't missed that one bit because when Ben Gibson gets the ball, he just drives. And I think at one point a few weeks ago, he was leading a lot of the um, compartments for passing in terms of stats in the championship, which is just phenomenal, isn't it? Now, I know a player like him is going to play more passes and probably have a bit more success than others. But nonetheless, it is, it's really, really good. And I think the thing that I take away from him is the fact that quite clearly, he is just very intelligent where he lacks in pace the pace that Ben Godfrey had the pace that got him out of a lot of sticky situations he makes up for an intelligence he knows where to be he can read the game very well and there are two mistakes that I can remember from Ben Gibson I think one of them was against Barra last time which was that absolute sitter that they missed um so they didn't even score from it so you've not got to worry about it as much as I have um but yeah Ben Gibson absolutely loved the guy really do Hmm, there you go, Chris. What, what you? I, th- I think we spoke about Ben Gibson last time you were on, but has it surprised you to see how how well he's done at, at Norwich? Or uh, obviously, are you one of those fans at, uh, at Borough that maybe saw his ability and aren't surprised to see him thriving in the Championship again after uh, a spell really where he struggled to get any first team football at all? Obviously, given his lack of game time at Burnley, I was a little bit surprised to see him sort of thrown in at the deep end straight away. I think he almost started. Um, playing for Norwich straight away after what seemed like two years without any football. But no, I'm I'm not surprised in the slightest. I'm one of the fans that absolutely loved Ben Gibson when he was at Middlesbrough. 
everything obviously you've seen of him and, and said about him, I, I agree with and sort of reminisce about exactly this the same way he used to play for, for Middlesbrough. And I'm just personally glad that he's playing football. You know, obviously he's he's from the local area and he's well, as cliche as it sounds, one of our own still. Uh, so it's it's just good to see him playing football and, and playing well. And and as you say, he, he very rarely makes mistakes. So I think his his quality is is probably shown and I'm I'm glad it is. Really nice guy as well, Ben Gibson. Um, from a current Norwich player to an ex-Norwich player now at Middlesbrough, Johnny Howson. Again, someone we spoke about before, but Neil Warnock has has been uh, has, has been praising him to the hills ever since. You know, he's, he spoke to him, he spoke about him being the the best midfielder in the championship, which I know went went down with, <laughs> with a few Norwich fans in terms of Emmy Buendia. But just how good has he been this season? Has, has it been a little bit of a resurgence for Johnny Howson this year? Yeah, he's been. He's, he's really been excellent. Obviously, I, I think I mentioned uh, earlier on in the season that he'd, he last season he played pretty much every position barring goalkeeper. So it, to see him in his natural position and to see him performing so well this season, it's it's been brilliant, really. Um, I think Neil Warnock's described him as the best midfielder he's ever worked with. Um, so obviously that is very high praise. And yeah, he just gets about, you know, he's sitting a little bit deeper in our midfield. He's probably the deepest of the three, um, but he just gets about his business and he's, he's really just got everything. You know, he's, he's covers every blade of grass. He's passing ability. Uh, everything about him really is, is brilliant. And uh, it, it was such a massive miss when he was injured for a few months. It's just great to have him back. Mm, absolutely. Um, ben, let's turn our attentions to, to the game on, on Saturday. Midday, just in case you, you've forgotten from the start of the show. Um, how, how do you think this one's going to go for Norwich City? How do you see it approaching it? Do you see it being a, a very similar game to, to what we've seen largely at Carrow Road this season, which has been teams maybe allowing Norwich the ball and saying, go on, then try and break us down. Do you see it being a bit like that again uh, tomorrow? Yeah, I, I do, to be honest with you. Um, it's a weird one, isn't it? Because when we got promoted last time, teams didn't expect it. Whereas this time a team will either come and attack us or properly park the bus. Like, There's no middle ground, really, is there? We saw Barnsley succeed with it in the FA Cup. Um, we saw Birmingham almost succeed with it um, until we undid them like the last minute of the game. But yeah, I'm not too sure what to expect, but I do know that Middlesbrough are going to be very defensively compact because it's a Warnock team, isn't it? You don't employ Neil Warnock for good football or attractive football. You employ him for a result. Um, and I know that he'll want to get one over on Norwich, which from our position... Could play into our hands. We could for, sort of find pockets of space. Um, but again, that's just sort of theoretically, isn't it? Um, I'd like to see Norwich attack the game. I know we've been in, in sort of a good um, stead of form, but at the same time, we haven't attacked teams as much as I would have liked. I want to see us play how we played against Bristol City. Although without Jordan Hugo, that might have to change a bit. But I'm feeling fairly positive. I would very much like to see... Um, Janulis play because I think that will really help Norwich sort of find their natural flow again um, but yeah I, I think Norwich will win I hope Interesting hold on to that prediction we'll ask you that at the end but in, in terms of that midfield selection I know you spoke earlier about maybe um, deploying Jakob Sorensen there what do you think about Lucas Rupp I know maybe he was a, a little bit rusty at Oakwell last week would you be inclined possibly if you were Daniel Farker to throw him right in obviously he did very well at the start of the season and that skip Rupp relationship uh, skipping Rupp as, as I like to call it at the start of the season worked quite, quite well in tandem could, could you see that being um, be, that t- the, or those two being the, the partnership tomorrow or not did you come out that yourself skipping I Rupp did, I did yeah, yeah well yeah. done that's, that is, that's, that's good <laughs> That represents the class of the partnership. Yeah, um, I would be tempted to throw Rupp in there. He's obviously a very, uh, what's the word, like technical operator, which is how I describe people who are good with their feet, but fairly weak. Um, so, yeah, it, it wouldn't be sort of a bad thing, really, would it? He's very good at sort of driving Norwich forward. He reminds me a lot of Tom Tribal when he first joined Norwich in that he seemed like a breath of fresh air. He was very quick to get the ball out of his feet, which absolutely suits Norwich down to the ground. The whole point of Norwich City's game is how successful can you be in transition? And when you are successful, you'll see Norwich score lots of goals. Um, So I wouldn't be opposed to bringing him in. He's obviously got a bit of um, rust to shake off, which hopefully he theoretically did against Barnsley. Um, So yeah, I wouldn't be opposed to it. But if Janulis is match fit, you absolutely have to throw him in and Jacob Sorensen back into his natural position because for me, that could be a real winning formula. Hmm, interesting. Chris, you, you heard Ben there uh, reference a, a Neil Warnock team as one maybe being defensively solid, one that will maybe look to 
or allow Norwich possession tomorrow. Is is that how you see it, or, or would you expect Middlesbrough to perhaps follow in, in in a way Barnsley did last week, which is press really high and with real success? What approach do you see Middlesbrough employing tomorrow? I think probably up until Wednesday night, I would have said you know the typical Neil Warnock defensively resolute as you say performance, but then when you ship three goals to Rotherham, it sort of changes your perspective a little bit. I think, obviously, as I mentioned earlier, we've got a lot of key injuries and specifically in defence. So, obviously, the two that will be massive misses, Fry and Dyke Steele, their replacements, Jed Spence and Nathan Wood, are still young players that can be got at and can sort of be exploited. Obviously, Jed Spence loves to get forward. I'm not so sure whether he actually likes to do his job in defence. So that is one area. And then, as you say, Norwich are a very attacking team. And it, it does slightly worry me, the, the ability and the, the type of players that Norwich have and how easy they will be able to unlock uh, pockets of space and, and get shots off at goal. There's been a lot of talk about Marcus Bettinelli at the moment as well, uh, whether his, you know, his performances have been sort of up to scratch, so I'm sure Norwich will be trying to test Ben Ellie as much as possible. Uh, it remains to be seen, obviously, whether Donnell Fisher will be registered in time, but I would have thought if that goes through that he will probably be starting tomorrow, so hopefully we can get that one over the line and, and he might make us a little bit more solid, but it, it doesn't look as though Dale Fry will be there, so I'd imagine it'll be Nathan Wood playing centre-half. <laughs> With everything you've referenced in terms of the poor form, is this game against the league leaders who, albeit lost in the FA Cup last weekend, but find themselves in a pretty good vein of form themselves, does it feel like this is a game that maybe has come at a, a little bit of the wrong time for Middlesbrough? Or will Neil Warnock, as, as I think he probably will be, be rubbing his hands together and relishing this one? I think Neil Warnock spoke about how excited he is for Norwich. I think, as Ben mentioned, he's he's really held a good since that last game and he's He's dying to try and get one over, but probably in terms of the injuries and the form we're in, it, it couldn't have really come at a worse time. Um, obviously, Norwich are, are sitting pretty at the top of the league and really doing it with ease, to be honest with you. So, yeah, I'm a, I'm a little bit concerned as, as to what may happen tomorrow, but I'm sure Warnock will put a set out that, you know, tries to uh, grind out a victory. Uh, we'll just wait and see, but personally, I'm... I'm a little bit concerned at the time and, and, and what I'm, what might happen tomorrow. Mm, interesting. Let's uh, let's hope those uh, words age well on your part uh, tomorrow evening. And, and and you're talking about a Middlesbrough win, Ben. How how do you see this game going? I know there'll be a lot of people that look at it as a as a clash of styles. Is is that kind of how you, how how you see it, or am, uh, am I maybe doing a, a disservice to Middlesbrough there? Do you think? Um, I'm not too sure about a clash of styles. I know this is a, a defensively, a more defensively minded Norwich, which really doesn't say much because for the past three or four years, defensive defending is just not a thing for us. But this season it has been. Um, obviously with players like Ben Gibson coming in. The only thing that really concerns me potentially is one Norwich not being able to break Middlesbrough down, which is quite an obvious one, where we just sort of pass the ball around and hope for a Mario Vrancic free kick in the 85th minute or whatever. That concerns me. But also what concerns me is Yannick Balassi coming on and sort of bringing his flair to the game. Because as we mentioned earlier, he's not played that much, but equally he is still a very good player, um, especially at this level, I think, as well. And he's one one player I sort of admired for a long time because he's one of them flair players, isn't he, where he gets the ball and he actually does like all the fancy tricks and it's really um, interesting to watch, not when you're playing against it. But um, I, I'm not sure if he's a left or right winger, but either way, I, I'm, I'm concerned that he's quicker than our full-backs, maybe a bit stronger as well. If he was to go up against Max Ahrens, I think he'd be a lot stronger and maybe have a little bit of success. Um, and also the, the fact that Norwich's full-backs play really high up the pitch does worry me if he was to enter the, the field at some point, whether he's starting or not. Um, but other than that, I'm, I'm not really concerned. And that's mainly because Norwich seem to just keep winning games. There's no real logical theory behind it um, in terms of not being concerned, to be honest with you. But Norwich seem to keep grinding out results and performances have really improved lately, bar Barnsley. Um, so I hope and think that we, we, we should be winning this realistically, yeah. Mm, go on then, give us your score prediction, Ben. How do you see it going tomorrow? Ah, oh, 2-1 Norwich, isn't it? Stinks for 2-1. <laughs> Lovely stuff. Thanks, Ben. Um, Chris, uh, let's come to you. How do you see this one going tomorrow as a, as a Middlesbrough fan? And of course, we'll we'll ask for your score prediction as well. Um, as I say, I'm a little bit concerned. So, 
I'm going to go Norwich 2-0. Um, I don't really see us scoring, to be honest. Um, obviously, with that rather run result and, and the recent form, I'm just not overly confident. I'd like to think even a point, taking a point away from Carroll Road would be, in my eyes, a, a, a success. But yeah, I think I think Norwich in the end will just have too much for us tomorrow. And I think, like I say, it'll be 2-0 to Norwich. Well, it's been very few uh, opposition fans we've on this, uh, had on this year that have, uh, have predicted like, a, 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 like a result against their side. I'd like to be optimistic, but as I say, just Norwich are going very well at the moment and I think it's just probably come at the wrong time. So, yeah, unfortunately, I'll have to back against. <laughs> Interesting stuff, gents. Thank you very much for, for joining me. Of course, pinkin.com, the place to go for um, and to more preview Daniel Farker's quotes as well ahead of this game. It's uh, it's certainly going to be an interesting uh, watch. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Of course, we'll be at Carrow Road tomorrow as well for all of our usual coverage. Gents, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you very much for watching. Stay safe and we'll see you probably ahead of Millwall, but if not, then definitely ahead of Swansea. See you soon. Thank <laughs> you.